The first most important element of this, the bit you've got to remember when it comes to establishing a relationship quickly is not what you say, it's not even what you hear. First, it's about what you observe. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. My name is Sam Hind, and today I want to talk to you about one of the most valuable lessons I've ever learned that uh, I know is going to have a great impact on many of you. I've told the story often enough about uh, my very first experience in door-to-door sales, But what I've never shared with you are the tips and tricks that I learned during that season in my life that I have taken forward and used in every relationship, in every experience and in every aspect of my business going forward. And today I'm going to share with you those tips and tricks on how to start a conversation with anybody from friend to stranger and build a relationship or begin that relationship in less than 30 seconds. Why does this matter? Well, in real life, when you meet someone for the first time, they're going to make an impression on you or they're going to make a first impression about you within that first 30 seconds. In addition to that, on social media and in the online world, we now don't have 30 seconds to get someone's attention. We've got less than seven. So these tips and tricks I'm about to share with you are probably more valuable now than what they've ever been before. So let's dive on in. Just before though we get started, I want to remind you of something really important and that is make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Direct Selling Accelerator podcast is shared across all uh, podcast channels. It's shared on YouTube and we put it through all of our social media channels as well. But to make sure you don't miss out, make sure that you either subscribe on your podcast channel or you can check us out on YouTube, subscribe to us there and make sure you don't miss out on any of the videos we've got coming up. We have loads of incredible guests, not only in the past that you can go back and watch and listen to, but also many in the pipeline to come, some of which I know are going to absolutely blow your socks off. So don't miss out on any episodes. Hit that subscribe button. Would love to have you join us. Okay, so let's dive on in. I want to just quickly share the backstory here because I want to I want you to know how I got to this point where I made this little discovery. And then I'm going to share with you what I learned in this life experience and why it is really that I'm sitting here today sharing this very story with you at all. Many of you know, because I've shared uh, the story a number of times about how I started my direct selling career at just 14 years of age. It was an amazing time for me. Uh, I had an incredible experience that was literally life-changing and I know lots of you have heard the story of this and I know for many of our listeners, the direct selling industry, which is party plan, network marketing, MLM, whatever you identify as, has changed the lives of many of you as well. If you want to hear a really amazing the story about how this industry has been so super impactful on just one person, let alone thousands, make sure you go back and check out the episode with Christine Ty Lee, who is a leader with Body Shop at Home, who had an unbelievable experience, a life-changing experience that this industry really helped support her through. Go back and listen to that. It was probably one of the only podcast episodes I would say that I've ever had to really hold the tears back through the whole interview Um, and for good reason. I know many people that listened to that episode were really moved. So if you want to hear a good one, that's definitely a great one for you to check out. We'll pop that into the show notes for you if you want to get a quick um, click over so you can check that one after this episode. But Let's go in. I want to talk to you about what happened next. So I did um, my few years in direct selling. By the time I was 18, I was earning a really good, amazing, actually solid income from this industry. And I'd learned so many incredible skills. I would like to say I'd become what I would consider to be a professional friend maker. I had turned relationship building into an absolute art and I loved every minute of it. But I then had a little bit of an experience 
that shook me down to the core and actually took me back to basics. And I feel like sometimes these things happen to teach us some really valuable lessons. But at 18, my dad sat me down and he said, Sam, it's really time you go out and you get yourself a real job. Because of course, most parents, quite rightly so too, don't see the value that this industry really has. And I think for most of us, we don't really truly appreciate it until maybe a little later on in life. But He sent me out into the workforce and at the time I was frustrated, but now I'm so grateful that he did because the next experience I had set me up for life. So I moved up to the big smoke. I was living in a small country town in South Australia at the time and I moved up to Adelaide. Um, Now, I don't know if any of our listeners here, if you remember the time, but Once upon a time when you went to get a job, you didn't go to seek and you didn't put a post on Facebook. You opened up something called a newspaper and you looked at the job section. Back then, these things were super thick. They were a totally different ballgame than what they are now. So I opened up the newspaper in Adelaide and I scrolled through, uh, scrolled through, I scanned. There was no scrolling back then. What am I saying? I scanned through the job section until I saw this job that literally jumped out of the page at me. It said, uncapped earning potential in big writing. And then in little writing underneath, it said 100% commission based. Now, For most people, that would raise some pretty mighty red flags. But for me, I'd just come out of direct sales. This is what I was used to. This sounded like a job for me and it had uncapped earning potential. How perfect. So, of course, I jumped at it. I brought my resume in with me. I was super excited. I went in all prepared to answer all these tough questions to get the job. And I know I don't need to tell you this, but naturally it was a cold calling door-to-door job. So, they gave me the job right there, right then on the spot. So I started the very next day. And on my very first day, uh, what they would do is they would fill the boot of my car with junk. So it was, you know, rubbishy books, fake perfume and cologne, uh, toys, I'm pretty sure that never worked, nasty jewelry. And I had the token steak knife sets. Yes, I did. I had steak knife sets to sell. (laughs) So they would pile all of this stuff in the boot of my car. They'd give me a duffel bag and a map and say, this is your area today. Off you go and sell as much as you can. Now, here I am, 18 years old. I now have rent to pay. I'm completely alone, have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm now out in the big, wide open world having to make my way. So there's a lot of pressure on my shoulders at this point, And I've had no training whatsoever. So I hit the road, out I go, I've got my duffel bag over my shoulder and I walk into my first business. And as I walk in, I start with this. Hi, my name is Sam. I've got some things here I'd like to show you. Can you spare a few minutes of your time? To which they instantly told me to get out. I thought, well, that wasn't such a great start. So I brushed myself off and I went into the next business. Hi, my name is Sam. I have some things here I'd like to show you. Can you spare a few minutes of your time? At which point this person told me to get out and never come back. I did this another 10 times. And I can tell you that the experience was pretty much the same thing again and again. I'd been yelled at. I'd been sworn at. I'd been told to get out. I'd had doors slammed in my face and I'd been physically escorted out of businesses. The very last stop though was the one that rattled me the most and the one that I've remembered for 20 years. And can I tell you, I've only just realized today that this story goes back 20 years this month. It occurred to me that the new program that we are launching on Monday off the back of this experience, and I'll tell you about very briefly in a moment, came from this very experience 20 years ago this month. So, I walk into the last business and I will never forget what happened. I walk in, it's a bottle shop and behind the counter, there's this big guy. He's the guy that I'm meant to speak to. And next to me on my left, there is another rep who's in there also selling to him at this point. I go to wait for the conversation to finish, but it what they did was they smiled at each other, separated, crossed their arms and both looked at me like, go on then, what have you got? Now, of course, 18-year-old Sam, 
girl in in the city, no idea what's going on here. She's got two intimidating men in front of her. I was shaking in my boots. And I, all right, well, I'm going to have to give it a crack, right? So I did my thing. Hi, my name is Sam. I've got some things here I'd like to show you. Can you spare just a few minutes of your time? At which point the guy behind the counter puts his hand literally in my face and says, get out. The guy next to me, as I'm walking out and, you know, head hung, shoulders bent, like I'm just spent. I'm, I've, I'm, I've had enough. It's been a rough day and I, I'm just ready to give up. This guy screams behind my back. I can feel he spit on the back of my head. And he says to me, if that's how you're going to show up, you might as well quit now. You will never be successful. At which I walked out to my car, I threw my duffel bag in the back seat and I sat in the driver's seat, put my head on the steering wheel and I just exploded in a mass of tears. I was alone. I had no idea what I was doing. I now made no money for the day and I had rent to pay and I didn't know what to do. And this guy, this rep was that voice in the back of my head. It was that voice that was saying, you can't do it. You don't know what you're doing. You will fail. And do you know what? At that very point in time, I 120% believed it. I didn't believe I could be successful. I knew I was a failure because look at what I, look at the evidence right around me here. I got reminded a few months ago by my coach that sometimes these people show up in our lives to show something to us. And at that very point in time, that guy was giving me one of the greatest gifts he could have ever given me because he was showing me something I needed to see for right now. Now, to take you to the next part of that story, I'm actually going to tell you about what I learned through this experience and I'm going to give you some tips that I know are going to be really impactful for some of our listeners today. But I went back to the warehouse and I had to unload the boot of my car. All of the other reps at this point are coming back as well and they're all celebrating their day. You know, some of them have come back with half their stuff, some have got rid of most of it. And in the corner of the room, there's a guy standing there and he's, he's just sort of watching me and everyone else unpack their cars. He's got nothing. Like he's come back, he's sold every last thing in his boot. And he's just kind of chilling out there and he, I can tell he's watching, but I, you know, at this point I'm exhausted, I'm grumpy and I'm ready to go. I'm about to go in and quit, right? So I unloaded the boot of my car and literally everything came out. And all, all I could do at this point was my best not to burst into tears again because I didn't want the embarrassment of all of these men because they were all guys watching me cry. So I unload my car and as I finish unloading it and I'm ready to walk to the office of the manager, this guy comes over to me. His name is Sam and Sam is a mid-50s Lebanese guy and he's what anyone would consider to be the smooth-talking salesman, right? Sam is a seasoned cold-calling pro. He knows what he's doing. But he's one of those people that you know he's a really good salesperson but there's something about him that you just can't help but listen to. You know who I'm talking about. You've seen people like this before. You're like, I know you're slick. I know you're a great salesperson, but something about you is captivating me and I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm about to tell you what it is, by the way, so that you can do it too. But Sam comes over and he says, you look like you've had a really rough day. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I really have had a really rough day. And he said, do you know, I actually really, truly think you can do this. I think you can do a lot better than what you think you can. And he said, I'd like to help you with that. He said, I believe in you. I, I know that you just need to believe in you a little bit more right now. So how about tomorrow? What do you say? We go out together and I'll show you what I know, but we'll work together. I'll be right by your side. It'll be all right. And at this point, I'm thinking, well, it can't get any worse, right? And I'm about to quit anyway. So what have I got to lose? Let's give it another day. So I got the next day with Sam. We've got our boots full, duffel bags over the shoulder and our mat with our area for today. Sam stands next to me and he goes, okay, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to be right by your side. But he said, I want you to walk into the first business and I want you to do what you did yesterday. Exactly the same. Don't change anything. I just want to see what you were doing. Okay, 
no worries. So, you know, I kind of get myself up, brush myself off and in I go. Sam right by my side. Hello, how are you? My name is Sam. I have some things here I'd like to show you. Can I spare it? Can you spare a few minutes of your time? At which they said, get out. And the both of us were booted out. I looked at Sam and I was ready to just say, let's quit. Let's walk away now. This is a waste of time, Sam. I'm, I'm not going to be successful at this. Sam looks at me and he goes, that's okay. He actually laughed. He goes, that's okay. You got to know. That's one step closer to a yes. Next place we go into, I'm going to be right by your side, but I want you to do something. Just tweak it. Just make it a little bit different. He said, here's the thing you need to know. When you go to anybody, whether you know them or you don't know them, and you enter into a conversation and you tell them who you are, why you're there and what you want, they're not going to give you the time of day because you haven't earned the right to do it yet. He said, you need to earn the right first. And how you earn the right is you establish commonality within the first 30 seconds. Commonality is establishing something that we have in common or establishing a conversation that is about them. When you make it about them, you've got all the time in the world. I am um, many years down the track, I ended up in car sales, then gym sales. When I say many years, a couple of years down the track, I ended up in gym sales, car sales, another story for another day. But one of the things that I learned very quickly off the back of this experience with Sam and moving into those roles was when people say to you, I've only got five minutes, that means you've only got five minutes to impress me. If you do that, you've got all the time in the world. And I always used what Sam was about to tell me to help me in those first five minutes. And I was a master at getting a conversation going. But I'll tell you what I was also a master at by default of using these tools I'm about to teach you was relationship building. Do you know, using these tools, I've managed to establish incredible relationships with some of the most amazing people all around the globe that have not just impacted my business because you don't know when you meet someone what area of your life they're going to impact. These are people who have had an impact on my family, my personal life, my relationships. They've also, many of them have become incredible coaches and incredible guests on this podcast just through simply getting to know them and building that relationship by establishing a conversation and commonality in the first few minutes of a conversation. So I'm going to talk you through what Sam taught me to do. So I walked into that next business. He was right by my side and I did what I'm about to tell you about. And this time the person looked at me, started having a conversation and we chatted for a good five, 10 minutes. Now the person then said to me, look, thank you for coming in. I'm not interested in buying anything today, but please come back next time you're in the area. Now I walked out of that business, I looked at Sam and I went, that's all great, Sam. We've just had another conversation and they didn't boot me out this time, but we didn't sell anything. So what was the point? And he went, ah, fantastic. You've learned another lesson. He said, you got another no, that's one step closer to a yes, but you also played the long game this time, not the short game. You focused on the relationship first and and the sale second. He said, which business will you feel more comfortable walking back into next month when you're back in this area? And I went, well, of course, the second one. I mean, they're expecting me. They know me. They're more likely to have a conversation with me. And I now kind of know what to talk to them about. And he went, exactly. He said, I've been in cold calling and door to door for decades. Most people don't last a week. He said, but the thing I fell in love with was the relationship building and the challenge of building the relationship as quickly as I can. He said, now I don't have a challenge anymore because every business I walk into knows who I am and they look forward to me walking through that door. He said, I couldn't come back at the end of the day with anything in my boot if I tried because I spent the time earning the right to walk into those businesses and talk to them about the products I had to sell. But he said, it's really easy to assume that you need to go in with the sell first and relationship second, because right now you're hungry and you need a sale. But you watch what happens, he said, playing the long game is so much faster than playing the short game. Don't churn and burn, build a relationship because that will last a lifetime. And he was so right. The next business I walked into, I did the same thing I'm about to teach you to do. 
and I made my first sale. I walked out, I fist pumped the arrow, so excited. And he said, great, you got a yes, let's go for another no. And we kept going for the rest of that day and I went back with an empty boot. So I want to tell you right now a little bit about what Sam taught me. But I also want to just segue this for a quick moment. There's a program that we're launching this year in 2022 that has been in the making since this day. This is a program that is all about me being your Sam. You know, I said to you at the beginning that sometimes these things happen because we are supposed to learn from them, but also because many years down the track, you're going to look back and go, this is why I had that experience. I had the experience of having that inner bully, that voice in the back of my head screaming at me, telling me I'll never be successful. And I can tell you right now that I have spoken to myself in far worse ways than that rep ever did, but he almost gave me permission to do it. Here's what we've done. We're launching a program called the Rise Up Inner Circle. This is a program that isn't about teaching, it's about doing. It's about me being your Sam. And it's kind of ironic, really, that my name is Sam. I don't think anything's ironic, but I love the fact that I am also Sam. So I get to be your Sam. Stand by your side, hold your hand and walk into that business and say, let's have another go. And so we're going to be um, providing two 30-minute sessions a week where we're going to start out your week on a Monday on an absolute high. We're going to do a power prospecting session together. I'm going to help you with this and I'm going to help you implement everything I'm about to teach you as well. And then on a Friday, we're going to have what we consider to be a frog eating session, which is a session where we prioritize and we deal with one piece of low hanging fruit that's going to get you maximum momentum in your business right now. And we're going to do that together as well. When I say together, we are literally going to do this together. This program is a monthly membership. There's no lock-in period. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the details of this in the show notes so you can jump in and check that out. You can also find it on our Facebook page and on our website. And we'd love to invite you in to be a Rise Up Inner Circle member with us where I'm going to be your Sam, because I am Sam, and walk you through this process. So let's jump on in now and I want to tell you what Sam taught me how to do. Now, Sam said to me, and this is still true today, but like I said, it's a little bit different in the sense that you've got 30 seconds to get someone's attention. Once you get their attention, you can have all the time in the world. But when you're online, it's even less time because it's such a busy place. So let's have a little bit of a look right now at how you build a relationship with anybody in 30 seconds. Now, I'm going to give you some actual tips and tricks to do this, but The first most important element of this, the bit you've got to remember when it comes to establishing a relationship quickly is not what you say. It's not even what you hear. First, it's about what you observe. Now, what Sam got me to do was when I walked into a business or I came into contact with someone, you can do this online as well, by the way, is observe pay attention to surroundings, pay attention to body language, pay attention to clothing. So the next business I walked into, he said, I want you to look at their desk, see if there's a picture on the desk, have a little bit of a look at any awards they might have lying around, have a little bit of a look at what they're wearing, pay attention to what's going on around them and use that to help you with the next step. Now, when I say you can do this online, think about social media. People have got profile pictures and their profile pictures often show you little hints and tips that will help you with this observation process. So pay attention to, do they have children? Have they, where are they for their profile picture? Are they on a holiday? Have they got a cool background? Are they working? Do they have a product in their hands? What are they up to? So observation is key to start off with. Now, sometimes that will give you clues and sometimes it won't. I'll give you an example of a clue I got just recently when I was in the supermarket. I had uh, finished my shop. It was after work. It was late afternoon, probably early evening. Everyone's, you know, at that kind of busy time in the supermarket and everyone's a bit exhausted from the day. I too was a bit exhausted and I wasn't really in the mood for carry on, but hey, let's face it, some of those times, they're the times that we really need to pay the most attention. So I'm putting all of my my things on the conveyor belt and suddenly the woman behind the checkout yells at me. 
There, you haven't left enough space. Just wait. And I thought, since when do we do social distancing with our food? So instantly I wanted to say to her, look, lady, I really don't think that my apples are going to give COVID to her apples. But I paused myself for a little moment. I thought this is a really good opportunity to practice, right? And that's something I want to tell you is when it comes to what I'm about, like these tips I'm about to give you, make sure you practice because this is something that you finesse over many years, not something that you get right immediately. And I've still got so much to learn in this space. I always will. So always be practicing and using opportunities to do that. Sometimes you'll learn things, sometimes you won't. But in this case, I learned something pretty quickly. So I moved my items just to keep the peace. She finished with the person in front of me and when it came my time, by this stage I'd been watching her for a little moment and noticed a few things. The first thing was her face was really clenched and drawn. Her jaw was tight so she was clenching her jaw. She was looking down. She wasn't looking up at anybody and making eye contact with anybody and her movements were really short and fast. I could also see her breathing was quite quick. So I noticed that she was quite stressed and I could tell she was a bit upset. So I thought sometimes the way people behave, it's not about us, right? Right hard to remember all of the time. But in this case, when it got to me, I I paused for a little moment. I'd made some observations and I looked at her and asked her a question. I said, how's your day been? You look like you've had a bit of a tough day. Do you remember that question that Sam said to me? And instantly she went, I just saw her do this. And she went, yes, I really have. She said, thank you so much for noticing I'm really sorry that I snapped at you before. That probably wasn't very nice, she said, but you're right. I've had a really rough day. At which point she perked straight up. I told her she was doing a really great job and uh, and she started chatting away and she was fine. So here's the thing. Little observations make a big difference. Guess what? Every time I go back to the supermarket, and this is a woman I've seen for a long time, over many years, She always smiles at me. She asks how my day was and she could have been really nasty to the person in front of me. But guess what? When I get there, she's as lovely as anything and she'll chat away the whole time I'm there, no matter what mood I'm in. So just keep in mind that these little tiny things make a big difference for those first impressions because she hadn't noticed me before that point. So a few things, I'm going to give you some tips here right now to break the ice, to build that relationship really quickly. And you've got to remember, when I was walking into those businesses, I was showing up with, hi, my name is Sam, which means this is me. I've got some stuff here I'd like to show you, which is, this is what I want to do. And have you got a few minutes of your time, which is, this is what I want from you. So instantly I've gone straight to, who I am, what I have, what I want, and I haven't taken two seconds to get to know you. So I want to give you some tips right now to change that around because what I was doing was pretty natural and we all do it in different ways, but we generally do it in almost every situation when we meet someone new for the first time without even knowing we're doing it. Little reminder, everyone's favorite subject is themselves and their favorite word in their vocabulary subconsciously is their own name. We're programmed to pay attention when we hear it. So a few things to help you with this. You've made some observations. You either use those observations or you need more information. So a really great way to get that quickly is number one, you can ask for advice. So if you're meeting someone for the very first time, let's say you're at the traffic lights on the street and the person standing next to you, turn to them and say, hey, I'm looking for a really great coffee shop. Do you know anything around here? You've asked for some advice and I can tell you right now, there are very few humans out there that don't love to be the expert. So asking for advice is a great way to break the ice and get them talking. Another thing is to ask for their opinion. Hey, I'd love your opinion on which is the best place to go to, what's the best coffee shop, who makes the best sandwich around here. So opinions and advice are a great way to break the ice really quickly if your observations haven't helped you with anything else just yet. Another way to get them talking is, and this is personality dependent, okay? This one won't work for everyone, but this one's certainly been a favorite of mine over the years, and that is to break the ice by making a really quick little joke, poking fun at something harmless, or sharing an interesting fact. So don't be the knower when you do this, but you can make it a little bit fun. You know, share an interesting fact about elevators if you happen to be in an elevator, just not about how they break down or kill people. Don't go there. But 
you want to share an interesting fact or have a little bit of a joke. And I'm really good at poking just a little bit of fun at myself or something going on around me in a respectful way but a way that gets the conversation going. And I rely a lot on humor. It's part of my personality. So it's a really good way for me to break the ice quickly, but you've got to think about what works for you. So if that's a natural go-to for you, use it. But practice, play with it, see what is a natural go-to for you and have some fun with that. Another really great one, and again, this is one that's got to be delivered genuinely. You've got to be very mindful about that because people will see straight through it and will actually do the opposite if you're not genuine. And that is to pay them a compliment. So if you notice something about them, and it's really easy to pay a genuine compliment to most people because there's got to be something. Most people you'll see, you know, might be something physical, but it might also be behavioral. And I really like this element. If you see them do something or behave some way and you think, you know, you know how you often think these things, but you never actually verbalize it. That's your opportunity. That's your in. And I can tell you, people will not remember what you said, but they absolutely will remember how you made them feel. I remember having this experience just a couple of weeks ago when I was doing a gym class with our gym. We do a a Metcon class, which is where they get us to do a bunch of really horrific exercises. I do this with my daughter and my husband. And One of the exercises this particular day was we had to go out of the gym and run the block and come back and then keep going with the other stuff. There was no rest. So we ran out the door and we ran the block. And as we got back, I am feeling seriously like a sweaty heifalump. Like I'm right behind the pack. I'm exhausted. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope there's no one watching me because it's so embarrassing right now. Someone on the street seriously turns and looks at me and said, I have never seen anybody look so happy and graceful as they run. Now, can I just say, first of all, that person was my absolute favourite person that day, but you can't help but feel great when someone does something like that. And like the lady behind the checkout, I went from shoulders slumped and feeling like rubbish to I stood up nice and tall and I can tell you I strode back into that gym feeling on top of the world right at that point in time. So compliments can be a really great way to get someone to feel great, which they'll remember as as their first impression of you, but also it'll get them talking too. So a compliment's a great one, but just make sure it's genuine if you're delivering that. Another really great way to break the ice and get them talking is to ask a question. Now, if you've made observations at this point, that can be a really good one to bring in. So that might be where you ask a question about something you've seen. So it might be something they're wearing. It might be the picture on their desk that we talked about or the trophy on the wall. Remember, everyone's favorite subject is themselves. So all you need to do is get them talking. Now, once you get them talking, I'm going to give you one quick tip here. Your most important next step is to establish something you have in common. That is your mutual ground and that is where you start to build the relationship. Now, I'm going to give you one other really important piece of advice before I share the very last way that you can get that relationship going quickly because I've got one more for you. But not everybody is your person and this is important to remember. If I walked into a business and I started a conversation and I couldn't establish commonality quickly and um, there were some other key tells that I would get pretty fast, I would recognize that person as not being my tribe, my ideal customer, and I wouldn't waste the time because we've got to move away from this assumption that every, absolutely every person out there is someone that we should be doing business with. That is not the case. There is a particular group of people out there that you were designed to connect with and they were designed to connect with you. And that's not everyone. There are some people that are not my people and I'm not theirs. And whilst I am aiming, and I can, this has been a pain point for me for years, So I can tell you from experience, whilst I'm aiming at everyone liking me, I am setting myself up for not just failure, but misery because it's not why I was put on on this earth. I was not meant to be someone that everyone liked, right? None of us were. And so um, I just want to really encourage you to treat it like, you know, remember when Sam said you got to know that's one step closer to a yes, just treat it like that. It's a little numbers game. That person is not my person. Let's keep looking for a person that is, and you will find one. It's just a matter of time. So 
Then the last tip I'm going to give you when it comes to breaking the ice and establishing the relationship so you can then create commonality, just find one little thing you have in common. It doesn't have to be big, is this. And this is a really great one to help you. Offer to help. This is something I think a lot of people miss and it's such a good opening. Offer to help. Now, this might be helping them, you know, lift something or carry something. That's an obvious, right? But it might also be something as simple as running ahead of someone to open the lift for them. It might be a matter of, um, and if you're thinking, well, how does this apply to social media? Good question. Here's how this one applies to social media. Let's just say you see someone comment on something or they've had an experience. Let's say that they make a comment that, I can't wait, I'm about to go to uh, Mexico. And you think, oh, I've been to Mexico. Why not reach out and let them know, hey, I've been there before. I've got some great places that I discovered while I was there. Would you like me to share them with you to help you make this a really special trip? So it's also an opportunity to ask questions, right? Hey, I've been to Mexico. What are you heading over there for? I'm I'm so excited for you. Make sure you go to blah, blah, blah. So um, offer to help. It might also be a matter of someone makes a simple comment like, oh my goodness, I am so sick and tired of having to do the gluten-free, dairy-free cooking every night for all different members of my family. I've got to cook like four meals every night. If you see or hear someone saying this or you see a post on Facebook about it and it's relevant to you, opening up the door to offer to help by simply sharing a recipe that's going to keep everybody happy. Hey, Sam, I just, I saw your post the other day. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I've got some gluten-free, dairy-free people in my house too. And I've actually discovered a recipe that my entire family love. It's dairy-free, gluten-free, and I only have to cook one meal for everyone. I'd love to share the recipe with you if that would be helpful. So offering to help can come across a lot of different areas. Let's say it's in your cold calling world. I remember one day I could see someone's coffee mug was about to tip off their desk, offering to help. I simply picked the mug up, put it on their desk and said, you don't want to make a mess with that. Let me help you with that. And instantaneously I had their attention for just a couple of seconds so I could then move on to the next thing. So offering to help is another really great way to break the ice, start building the relationship. Now, I'm going to give you another little tip here, and this one actually comes from my friend Oscar Trimboli, who not only spoke on our podcast last year, he's a deep listening expert, amazing episode, definitely one that you should get in and check out. But Oscar also, um, he's about to release a brand new book um, called Deep Listening, which is, uh, I know, going to be absolutely amazing. But he shared one thing that was really important, and that was, of course, you want to keep people talking. And sometimes they're just looking for a bit of permission to do that. When they speak, that is your observation time. That's your time to learn, to take some things in, pay attention, because your next step is going to come from what they've said. So if you haven't quite got enough information yet, and maybe you sense that they're not quite done and they haven't gone deep enough, it is an opportunity to ask them to continue. And there's a great question that I loved that Oscar shared with us on the podcast, and that was simply, tell me more. You could also phrase this one by simply saying, and what else? There are a few different ways you can do it. But the thing I love about this question is it invites them to keep talking about them. And there's going to be very few people that don't take that opportunity up if you've laid it out the right way. So at that point, listen, pay attention because what comes out of their mouth next is going to be your window and your opportunity to build that relationship quickly. And remember what you're looking for at this point is commonality. What is something we have in common? And you'll be able to pick that up fast because they'll say things, you'll see things, you'll pay attention to things, body language, the way they're showing up, maybe even something that they're wearing. Look at jewelry as well. Another quick tip, rings is a really big one, a really great one to compliment on that opens up a conversation because typically, and this was something I learned in those cold calling days, typically people don't change their rings all the time. They wear the same set of rings every day. Not everyone, but most people. And so if you compliment a ring, there's usually a story. It might be something they were gifted. It might be an heirloom. It might be something they bought themselves, or it might simply be something that um, uh, has got a little bit of a story behind it. So rings are a really good little observation to make. So pay attention to what they're wearing and use that as your way to open up the conversation, break the ice and establish a bit of commonality. 
What I mean by that is if someone tells you, my kids gave me this ring for my 50th birthday, what have you just worked out? They've got kids. What's your next question? How many kids have you got? How old are they? You know, what are they interested in? You're going to work all of this out pretty quickly by simply listening and asking more questions. So I'm going to give you two last final little tips to um, uh, create that trust really quickly when you're doing this process. And this is teeth and eyes. When you're meeting someone for the first time or establishing the relationship in those first 30 seconds, your teeth and your eyes are what's going to help you establish that trust. Subconsciously, we trust people more when we can see their teeth and when we can see their eyes. So smile with your teeth and let them see your teeth while you're talking. If you're typically someone who doesn't show your teeth a lot while you're talking, Find some ways to show your teeth off that aren't weird and cheesy. So, you know, try a smile. Just make sure that you're incorporating teeth and eyes to establish the trust as quickly as you can. It will help you with the commonality and it will certainly help you with the relationship. And I can tell you that these tools, which we'll build on inside of Rise Up, and I'll share a lot more of these, but these tools have helped me in my relationship with Greg, my relationship with my kids, my relationship with my family, my work colleagues, and of course, clients and customers over the years. It isn't manipulative. It is simply learning how to connect with other humans. And the more that you can get great at this, the more people are going to trust you. They're going to feel connected to you. They're going to resonate with you. And the more you're going to open yourself up to that incredible tribe of yours that is ready and waiting for you to show up to the world. So get out there and practice and play with some of these. Do it on strangers. This is the best way. And I'm so glad I had that door-to-door experience because let me tell you, door-to-door was a baptism of fire. And I was, I will tell you a little secret, I was their longest standing ever employee. Sam moved around business to business, but I was their longest standing ever employee. I was there for an entire month. So in that time, and it may seem like a short time, but I can tell you it was not, I learned so many incredible tools and many of these I've already shared, many more I will continue to share with you as we go into Rise Up. But I want to invite you to two things. The first is if you would love me to be your Sam, walk right by your side, continue teaching these things, but most importantly, do them with you, then I would love to invite you to join us inside of the Rise Up Inner Circle. We're actually going to share with you a little bit more information about that group and what it is in the link in the show notes. So if you want to know a little bit more about how much it costs, how the membership works, how you can get involved, just click on the link below, get in there, check it out. We would love to have you join us. It's going to be an incredibly powerful group and I'm going to make your promise. If you join us inside of Rise Up, I promise you that we are going to get you that big, hairy, audacious goal because I believe in you right now, probably more than you believe in yourself. I know you can do this and I'm really, really excited to go on this journey with you. The other thing I want to invite you to is we also have, for those people that think this is all great, I love, you know, doing learning with Sam and Greg, but I just, I don't want to pay to do anything right now. Maybe it's not in your budget. Maybe you're already doing some other learning with other people. I'd love to invite you into our free community. We have an amazing community built and designed for direct sellers all around the globe to help you up your social media marketing game. It's called Social Media for Direct Sellers with Greg and Sam. It's a free group on Facebook and I would love to welcome you on in and invite you to be a part of that amazing community in there. We jump in there and we share loads of free resources, updates on Facebook and Instagram, and we share some really great trainings in there as well. So I would really love to invite you on in there. But for those of you that are ready to up your game and take the next step and you want to work with me directly, I'd love to see you inside of Rise Up. But that's it from me today. Thank you so much for tuning on in. Make sure, of course, if you love this episode, don't just subscribe, share it with others, share it with people in your team. We want to, our mission is to have an impact on direct sellers globally so you too can have an impact on those people you're meant to show up for. I'm super excited to see what the ripple effect is of that. And I really want to encourage you, make sure you jump in, listen to the episodes with our other guests. We've got some incredible people that have given of their time and their knowledge to help you grow your business. So first of all, huge thank you to you for tuning in and joining us. We really appreciate you. And second of all, I look forward to seeing you in on the episode again next week. But thank you again for tuning in. It's been awesome spending this time with you. Have an amazing week and I look forward to seeing you on the podcast again next week. Bye for now. 
Thank you for joining us in this episode of the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. If you love listening and you found that this was helpful for your direct selling business, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the recommended video that's popped up on your screen right here. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.